he could possibly fight the winner of that. Um, or do you think, you know, I know there's still that guy, Jerron Boots Ennis, floating around. It's that younger name floating around at, at, at welterweight. I Floyd Mayweather has never been shy about speaking his mind. And when it comes to boxing, his words carry the weight of experience and success. I, I know, you know, Just like, like, like we always say, we got somebody gotta give you a chance. Somebody gotta give you an opportunity to give you a chance. Recently, Mayweather lavished praise on Terence Crawford, acknowledging his incredible achievements and demanding that Crawford consider a fight with the rising star Jaron Ennis. You jumped up out of my my sanctioned body to go fight in the IBF. So what I know? What you mean? What you mean? What I mean? Would you rank that in the WBA or not? Yeah. This statement from Mayweather has added fuel to the already building debate about what should be next for Crawford, who recently vacated his welterweight titles to pursue new challenges. Catch up. Wanna, I'm he, talking about he before not, that. He, he not about it. We already, we already know he's not about what he's talking about. I'm not about I'm what? Fight. I'm not about you what? You, want, you don't want to fight. You said I'm not about what? Now, Jaron Ennis has made no secret of his desire to face Terrence Crawford. Even as Crawford moves up in weight to pursue bigger challenges, Ennis remains determined to secure a fight with the pound for pound king. Crawford and Boots Ennis. I like that From fight. Philadelphia. I like that fight. Ten Philadelphia. Day. Ooh. And go to sleep. Go Don't to sleep. Fight. Look, you, you dreaming, man. You talking in your dreams, Don't man. Yeah, we we asked for that fight plenty of times. Dude. Plenty when? Of times. When? Plenty of times. What's plenty? When? Man, you got right. you front. You know what's you up. Front. Crawford, especially after an impressive victory over Errol Spence Jr., left the welterweight division, vacating his titles, and leaving a void that Ennis has partially filled by capturing the IBF title. However, the title isn't what Ennis truly wants. He wants the fight that could define his career. In the WBA or not? Yo, I'm, it don't or the even WBA. matter. Yo, All you, right, you catch up, little homie. You, catch up, man. If it don't matter, catch up. Yo, he picked Ebenezer. Catch up. Was way under you just said it don't matter. Catch up. Ennis has already proven his medal in the ring with a stunning performance against David Avanesian in his first title defense. This victory further solidified his reputation as one of the most dangerous and talented fighters in the welterweight division. Despite his success, Ennis is not content to rest on his laurels. I always, I always said uh, Boots was, was, was a great talent. I always told everybody that I supported them. I've been supporting them since he was in the amateurs. He has expressed a willingness to move up to super welterweight to chase the elusive fight with Crawford, but the sentiment has not been reciprocated. Crawford, ever the competitor, has set his sights on an even more ambitious goal. A showdown with Sal Canelo Alvarez, the reigning super middleweight champion and one of the biggest stars in the sport. Canelo is a prize fight that could bring Crawford immense financial rewards and cement his legacy as one of the greatest fighters of his generation. Like we always say, we got somebody got to give you a chance. Somebody got to give you an opportunity to give you a chance. So somebody got to give Boots the opportunity and a chance. Whether it's a uh, chance or somebody else. This pursuit of greatness is understandable, but it leaves fighters like Ennis in a difficult position as they seek their own shot at glory. Your mind has changed. Uh, yeah, I'm, I came here to support, uh, you know, my teammate, you know, Andy Cruz and uh, yeah, came to see him put on a show and I was, I was invited, so couldn't turn it down. <laughs> Mayweather, who famously defeated Canelo in 2013, understands the importance of taking calculated risks in boxing. His victory over Canelo is one of the most significant wins of his career, and it has aged remarkably well as Canelo has gone on to achieve extraordinary success in the sport. In an interview with Fight Hype, Mayweather reflected on this experience and how it relates to the potential Crawford Ennis matchup. You know, if you're in the Terrence Crawford position, is, is it time for him to move up? Um, does, well, does, does, well, wait, wait. I think when he, he was like, you know, I really super, super, super skillful. I think that'd be a hell of a fight with Boots Ennis. Like we always say, somebody got to give you a chance, an opportunity. Somebody got to give Boots the opportunity and chance, whether it's Terrence or somebody else. Mayweather remarked. At, at, at welterweight, I, I know, you know. I think it'd be, be, be a hell of a fight. Mm -hmm. uh, Boots Ennis. Just like, 
like like we always say, we got somebody gotta give you a chance. Somebody gotta give you an opportunity and a chance. These words carry significant weight, especially coming from Mayweather, who is known for his meticulous approach to selecting opponents. He acknowledges the difficulty Crawford has faced in securing high-profile fights, particularly with Spence and Canelo. Well, this, if he wanted to go to 168, and he want to fight Canelo bad, and Benavidez want to fight Canelo bad, they can't get Canelo. They can fight each other. Both potential matchups have been fraught with challenges, making the prospect of a fight with Ennis all the more intriguing. Mayweather's comments also touched on the dilemma that many top fighters face, balancing legacy with financial gain. I'm sure that both of you guys are chasing one fighter. If y'all feel like y'all chasing him and y'all can't get that fighter. He brought about a big question during the interview asking, you gotta ask yourself, is it about the legacy? Is it about the money? Is it about both? I'm not in these fighters' heads, so I don't know. But if you do want to fight him, fight him. If you don't, don't. Fight somebody else. Do what makes you happy. We got somebody got to give you a chance. Somebody got to give you an opportunity and a chance. So somebody got to give Boots the opportunity and a chance. Whether it's a uh, chance or somebody else. Seems he continued to highlight the complex decisions that fighters like Crawford must make as they navigate their careers. For Crawford, who has already achieved so much, the question of legacy versus financial gain is a pressing one. He has openly stated that he is looking for fights that will bring way more to his bank account and way more to his legacy. Unfortunately for Ennis, Crawford seems to believe that a fight with Canelo is the answer to both. It's been difficult for Crawford to get the Spence fight done. It's been difficult for him to get the Canelo fight done. The road ahead for Crawford is filled with possibilities. For Ennis, this could be the opportunity he has been waiting for, a chance to fight Crawford on the grand stage and prove that he belongs among the elite of the sport. Jaron Ennis had just delivered a stunning performance in the ring, cementing his status as one of boxing's most dangerous contenders. On that Saturday night, he improved his record to 31-0 with a breathtaking 10th round knockout of the tough and resilient Roman Villa. The fight had been a true test of Ennis's skill and patience, as Villa had given him a serious challenge before Ennis found the perfect opportunity to close the show with a lethal left hook right uppercut combination. It was a finish that reminded everyone why Ennis was considered a future superstar in the sport. But as the adrenaline of victory began to fade, Ennis quickly shifted his focus to what lay ahead. Power punch to the fight. A beautiful right hand. We talked about that Villa was trying to throw. And number seven, undefeated Jerron Boots Ennis. We have to wait for Errol Spence and Bud to fight, Ennis said in the post-fight interview with Showtime's Jim Gray. The anticipation in his voice was evident as he spoke about the fight that everyone had been waiting for, a clash between two of the sport's most talented fighters. Ennis made it clear that he had his sights set on the winner of that bout. Number one, you know, contender, and uh, I, I think, I think uh, Mr. Big Fish in here is so, so it's time to go fishing. <laughs> well, there's Errol right there. I want the winner of that fight, he declared, his ambition shining through. Ennis was not interested in just any fight, he wanted the best, and he was ready to step up and prove himself against whoever emerged victorious. I feel like, uh, if he don't fight, like I said, if he don't fight uh, Crawford, I'm here. And, uh, I, I, like I said, it's time to go fishing. You know? I heard him say he wanted, he, wanted, uh, he wanted a real man. The Spence Crawford fight, held in Las Vegas, had been one of the most anticipated matchups in recent memory, and it delivered on all fronts. Crawford, with his remarkable ability to adapt and dismantle opponents, had emerged victorious in a dominant performance. The fight was initially billed as a 50-50 contest, with many experts struggling to pick a clear favorite. But Crawford's precision, power, and ring IQ had proved too much for Spence, leading to a conclusive victory that left no doubt about who the king of the welterweights was. Despite Crawford's win, everyone was on to the possibility of a rematch, especially given the reported rematch clause in the contract. At the end of the seventh! Five. Crawford is just a special, special fighter. All right, hook upstairs, and Crawford has Spence hurt again. All right, hook that wobbles him, Spence might be... This clause complicated matters for Ennis, who was eager to challenge the newly crowned undisputed champion. 
Ennis understood that if Crawford and Spence were to engage in a rematch, his chance to face the winner might be delayed until this year or beyond. But Ennis was not one to sit idly by. He was determined to stay active and continue to build his resume. We got a guy in Jerron Ennis right now who's killing everybody. You know, um, Floyd is praising him, um, Roy Jones, everybody really. Like what a part of you and not looking past Terrence, but would a part of you be like? Acknowledging the likelihood of a rematch, Ennis discussed his plans to stay busy while waiting for his shot at the undisputed title. He was ready to take on any top contender in the welterweight division. Please. You, you dreaming, man. You talking to your dreams, no, man. No, my fight. Yeah, we, we asked for that fight plenty of times, yo. Plenty when? of times. When? Plenty of times. I'll take Imantis Stanionis. Ennis said confidently, referring to the highly regarded Lithuanian fighter. Stanionis had been a rising star in his own right, and a matchup between him and Ennis would be a compelling clash of styles. Both fighters were hungry, and both had something to prove. Unification fights out there for you. There's also Terrence Crawford, who Eddie Hearn says he wants to make that fight if Crawford wins on August 3rd. What's your preference? Most definitely, let's make it happen, you know? Ennis also mentioned Virgil Ortiz, who had been forced to withdraw from a scheduled fight due to health issues. Ortiz had also been on Ennis's radar for some time. With Ortiz temporarily out of the picture, Ennis's focus shifted to other big names in the division. Stanionis, Keith Thurman, Jordanis Ugas, Bud Spence, all the top guys out there. Let's make these fights happen, Ennis urged. Let him stay in the ring too long with boots. You know what I mean? And they talk about, you know, he, he, he punch, he get right, with good punch and power when he walk. You. Keith Thurman, a former unified welterweight champion, was another name that intrigued Ennis. Thurman had been a dominant force in the division before injuries and inactivity slowed his momentum. A fight between Thurman and Ennis would be a classic matchup of youth versus experience, and it would certainly draw significant interest from boxing fans. When he, when he for, um, he was he for Ebony. He's for Ebony too, yeah. but. I think he was supposed to, he was in the middle of doing something for the era at the time. Yes. Jordanis Ugas, who had once held a version of the welterweight title and famously defeated the legendary Manny Pacquiao, was another potential opponent for Ennis. Ugas was known for his toughness and ring savvy, and a fight between him and Ennis would be a high stakes affair with major implications for both fighters' careers. Is that like the discouraging thing about boxing? Because you know, when when you start boxing, right, I know you, you love being in the gym. Like you live for this. Right? You're one of those guys I can tell love boxing. Right? Yeah. You really love boxing. Yeah, I mean, having fun. Man. Yeah. If it ain't fun, don't do it. And it's hard to be somebody that's fun. Yeah. Uh, it's hard to be somebody that's having fun and doing what they're doing. And, and they hungry. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's different. That's why a lot of guys don't want to fight me. I'm hungry. I'm having fun. Despite the uncertainty surrounding the potential rematch between Crawford and Spence, Ennis remained laser focused on his goals. He was determined to fight one more time before the end of the year, aiming to make it three fights in 2023. For Ennis, staying active was crucial. He knew that every fight brought him closer to the ultimate goal of becoming the undisputed welterweight champion. Ennis's knockout of Villa was a reminder of his lethal power and finishing ability, but it was also a testament to his strategic acumen. Villa had pushed Ennis to dig deep and adapt, showcasing Ennis's ability to gather information and execute a perfect plan. It was this combination of physical talent and ring intelligence that made Ennis such a dangerous opponent for anyone in the welterweight division. Terence Crawford continued to etch his name in the annals of boxing history by becoming a four-division champion on Saturday night in Los Angeles. His unanimous decision, win over Israel Madrimov, added another layer to his already storied career, further solidifying his reputation as one of the sport's greats. Yet, despite the victory, questions linger about what lay ahead for Crawford, particularly concerning a potential rematch with Errol Spence Jr. Just a few weeks before his bout with Madrimov, Crawford was optimistic about the possibility of facing Spence again. When I spoke with him, he seemed open to the idea, saying that the possibility is still there for a rematch with his rival. The first fight between the two had been highly anticipated, a clash between two of the best welterweights of their generation. Crawford's dominant victory in that encounter left fans eager for a second showdown, but as of late, things have taken a different turn. In the early hours of Sunday morning, following his victory over Madrimov, Crawford addressed the media. When pressed about the likelihood of a rematch with Spence, his response was simple and definitive, nah. 
This terse reply indicated a significant shift in Crawford's outlook, leaving many to speculate about what had changed in such a short period. One potential factor could be the uncertainty surrounding Spence's next move. Initially, Spence was set to challenge Sebastian Fundora for the WBC and WBO titles at 154 pounds, a fight that would have marked his debut in a new weight class. However, that bout has since been postponed, casting doubt on Spence's immediate future. Crawford, ever the calculating strategist, may be unwilling to wait around for Spence to resolve these issues, especially considering his desire to remain active and continue building his legacy. Another aspect that could be influencing Crawford's decision is the speculation about Spence's current condition as a fighter. Spence's career has been marred by a series of unfortunate events, including a serious car accident that left him with significant injuries. Though Spence returned to the ring and continued to compete at a high level, there have been lingering concerns about how much he has left in the tank. His performances, while still impressive, have not quite matched the peak form he showed before the accident. Crawford, a fighter who thrives on challenging himself against the best, might be questioning whether a rematch with Spence would offer the same level of competition it once promised. Moreover, Crawford's focus might be shifting towards an even bigger challenge, one that could cement his legacy in a way few other fights could. There are still rumors swirling about a potential showdown with Canelo Alvarez, the current 168-pound champion and one of boxing's biggest stars. Canelo, Johnny Boy Boxing, Flight High. I just want to ask you, what do you think about Terence Crawford? What do we think about Terence Crawford's performance and what, do you want to get a fight with him? Is that, if the money is right, I mean... $100 million, I heard, I heard Turkey he offered you a big money already. Turkey Alalshik, a prominent figure in the world of sports promotion, confirmed that he had extended an offer to Canelo for a fight with Crawford. This matchup, if it materializes, would represent one of the most audacious moves in Crawford's career. Crawford began his professional journey at 135 pounds, steadily climbing the ranks and conquering each weight class he entered. He won world titles at 135, then unified the division at 140, becoming the undisputed champion. Moving up to 147, he repeated the feat, proving his dominance across three weight divisions. His victory over Madrimov at 154 pounds marked his fourth weight class championship, a rare achievement in the sport. However, a leap to 168 pounds to face Canelo would be an entirely different challenge, one that could define his career. Canelo, the reigning champion at super middleweight, is widely regarded as one of the most skilled and powerful fighters in the sport today. A matchup between Crawford and Canelo would pit two of the era's most accomplished fighters against each other, but the odds would heavily favor Canelo. Not only would Crawford be giving up significant size and power, but he would also be entering a weight class that is entirely new to him. Canelo, on the other hand, has been competing at 168 pounds for several years, collecting titles and dispatching challengers with relative ease. Despite the daunting nature of the task, Crawford has never shied away from challenges. His career is proof of his willingness to face the best no matter the odds. The fight against Madrimov, while not as high profile as a potential bout with Canelo, provided a glimpse into how Crawford might fare against bigger opponents. Madrimov, a powerful and skilled fighter from Uzbekistan, presented Crawford with a unique set of challenges. While Crawford was never in serious trouble during the fight, Madrimov's straight right hand found its target on several occasions, reminding everyone that even a fighter as skilled as Crawford can be tested by a larger, stronger opponent. Crawford's ability to adapt and overcome Madrimov's style was impressive, but it also raised questions about how he would handle the sheer physicality of someone like Canelo. The stylistic matchup between Crawford and Canelo would be fascinating, with Crawford's speed and technical brilliance going up against Canelo's power and ring IQ. Yet, the size difference cannot be overlooked, and it is likely that Crawford would enter the ring as a considerable underdog. Before any potential fight with Canelo takes place, Crawford may opt for another bout at 154 pounds. This would give him more time to acclimate to carrying additional weight and sharpen his skills against bigger opponents. Such a fight would serve as a tune-up before the monumental task of facing Canelo, allowing Crawford to further refine his approach and strategy. Jaron Boots' Ennis, riding high on the momentum of his fifth-round stoppage win over David Avanesian, made a bold declaration in the post-fight interview. Speaking to Dazen, Ennis didn't mince words, calling out none other than Terence Crawford. Let's make it happen. I want big fights. Terence Crawford or anyone else at that weight, let's get it he asserted, signaling his intention to take on the top names in the welterweight division.
It was a statement that reverberated throughout the boxing community, a challenge from a rising star who many believe is the future of the sport. Ennis's call-out was meant to generate excitement, a soundbite that could propel him further into the spotlight. However, the reality of the situation suggests that a showdown with Crawford might be more of a pipe dream than a realistic possibility. Terence Crawford, the undisputed welterweight champion and one of the pound-for-pound -pound kings, has his sights set on an even bigger prize. Rumors have been swirling about Crawford eyeing a mega fight with Canelo Alvarez, the reigning 168-pound champion and arguably the biggest name in boxing. Such a matchup would not only provide Crawford with the opportunity to cement his legacy, but also offer a massive payday, one that far exceeds what a fight with Ennis could bring. Given this context, it's unlikely that Crawford would risk his potential golden parachute payday by stepping into the ring with Ennis, a young, hungry, and dangerous opponent. Ennis, though immensely talented, doesn't yet carry the star power or financial allure that would entice Crawford away from a potential clash with Canelo. Promoter Eddie Hearn, who has been a vocal supporter of Ennis, was quick to praise his fighter after the Avanesian win. That was Boots Ennis one year out, dismantling a world-class fighter with ease in there, having fun, doing what he does in the future for Boots Ennis, Hearn said, painting a picture of Ennis as the heir apparent in the welterweight division. But while Hearn's words were filled with optimism, the fight itself told a slightly different story. Hearn remains convinced that Ennis is the future of boxing. Boots Ennis is the future of boxing. That's what this man is. He's very humble. You never hear him say too much. I'll say it. I think he beats everyone. I think this is a special fighter that needs to be tested against the best in the world, and that's our job now," Hearn declared, emphasizing the need for Ennis to face top-tier opponents moving forward. Hey, Ennis. My guy, no. Crawford's dad. Listen, what dad. That's Crawford's dad. <laughs> well, what's your take? Share your thoughts below, and don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel for more interesting updates. See you in the next one.